For joining me again today on A Woman's Joy. My name is Donette Douglas. I'll be your host for the next half hour. And we are continuing on our discussion with Candy Rice from Hannibal, Missouri. Nice to have you Thank back you. again this week. Thank you. I'm glad and to be here. Uh, yes, we had a time went quickly last week. We <laughs> yes. got a whole lot we want to share with you. But <clears throat> before we get into uh, the discussion today, we're going to go to our scripture from Romans 15, 13. Now, I know we used it last week, but this is a powerful scripture that really pertains to her testimony of healing. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I love that scripture. Mm -hmm hope, joy, peace. We all want that mm -hmm. in our life. Yes, we do. Well, Candy last week gave her, shared her testimony of her healing of clinical depression. And at the end of the uh, program, I showed you a book she has written. And it is entitled, He Enriched My Life by the Death I Suffered. Learning to Trust God Through Depression. And there on the screen you can see that it's available on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble. But you can also go to her website, www.candyrice.org slash shop and get the book there. And this book, I'll just read a little bit from the back. says, are you or do you know anyone who is living in the black pit and it would... It's a black pit, wasn't yes, it, Candy? It was. Not only for you, but for your family uh -huh. sometimes, your uh -huh. husband especially, of clinical depression, hopeless, ap apathetic, sad, guilty, anxious, even suicidal. The real life account offers spiritual inspiration. This testimony, this book, uh, offers spiritual inspiration practical strategies and hope to anyone who is clinically depressed or knows someone in the depths of clinical depression. And she talked about some of the feelings, mm -hmm. emotions that she went with, through at that time. He enriched my life by the death I suffered. Wow. And wow. it was a death. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, also want to encourage people to get on your Facebook page, yes. um, uh, Living Hope. Living Hope, and each week on Tuesday mornings I publish a new vlog, a video blog. Mm -hmm. They're about 10, 12 minutes long, mm -hmm. and it's biblically based physical, mental, and spiritual healing truths that I share with people because we are three in one. We are physical, and yes. we are mental, and mm -hmm. we are spiritual. Mm -hmm. So all three need help mm -hmm. and need treatment. And I know you shared last week on the program that you uh, continued to go to church, mm -hmm. you and your husband, mm -hmm. during this time, mm -hmm. and that you had a scripture that really, <laughs> really brought you through this time. Yeah. Could you tell us about that scripture? Well, uh, as I came out of my depression and the Lord told me to write my book and then told me to start this ministry and to go out and speak and share, uh -huh. I thought, what's, uh, what's the name? I've got to call it something. And oh my goodness, did I fret and I prayed and I worried and I stressed. And in the meantime, my pastor's wife, she came to me and she said, well, these are the things I've heard. And she listed off about four mm -hmm. or five. And then my husband said, well, this is what I heard. I'm like, mm, nothing resonated. Well, <laughs> when I came across 1 Peter 1, 3, and mm -hmm. it says, may the God of hope, that's Romans 15, 13, yeah, sorry. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in His great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope mm -hmm. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. When I read that verse, there it just went whoop, 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 like He does. He yes. highlights. And that word, living hope. And then I remembered, that's the verse that my pastor's wife brought to me. That's what my husband said he heard as well. But it took the third time mm -hmm. of me seeing it in the Word that it just... 
came alive and like there it is living hope and it is a living yes, hope yes it is because Jesus Christ even though uh, the enemy thought he had took him out at the cross mm -hmm. he defeated death mm -hmm. he arose on that third day and now he's seated at the right hand of our Father in heaven it is a living hope yes. that we have through Jesus yes. Christ Amen. I love that verse. Yeah. You know, that's why it's important that we get in the Word of God and know what Scripture says. Mm -hmm. We really need to know what the Word of God says. And these words are truth. Mm -hmm. You can stand on these words. If God said it, it will happen. It is already accomplished uh, because Jesus did defeat death. Like mm -hmm. I said, it was, you know, he put his arms up. He said, it's finished. Yeah. That means everything was completed. Everything was completed that we could have abundant life. Right. Jesus said, I've come that you would have life and have it more abundant. Yes. But people sometimes, and me too, because I went through situations and I didn't understand the death I suffered. Mm. But it makes sense when you think of the scripture that says, you know, we have to die. Yes. We have to crucify our flesh. Yes. And there is a death in that. And it's yes. a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when a seed goes in the ground. Yes. That's a death, isn't it? Yes. But then life comes from it. So, yes. yeah, good things can come from our suffering. We don't think so at the time. Yes. But uh, God gives us hindsight and shows us and he's faithful. And so, yeah, it was a death. Uh, it was a terrible suffering. It's, yes. it's something that if you know anyone who's depressed, uh -huh. be compassionate to them, uh -huh. be gentle with uh -huh. them, uh, pray for them, uh -huh. and be willing to sit with them in their pit, is how uh -huh. I say it. Um, but also be willing to take them by the hand and help lead them out of the pit. With the help, of course, of Holy Spirit and yes. Jesus and our Father in Heaven. Amen. But He gives us people. He works through people, too. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be very compassionate with the depressed, not shame them. Right. Which is often what happens. Yes. <laughs> or pity. Yeah. Yeah. Pity them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Commiserate with them, but also speak the truth in love. Yes. And uh, sometimes it's not easy to do, but mm -hmm. yeah, help them out. Amen. I know that you have a special blog. In fact, you're going to start doing some live interviews yes. on your Facebook page yes. once a month. Mm -hmm. And the first one will be, you want to tell them, give everybody an invite? Yes. The first one is going to be July, what's my date on there, 16th? 16th. Uh -huh. Okay. The 16th at 7 p.m. And it's going to be with my daughter. She's Wonderful. my first guest. And uh, she has gone through a lot because she has a genetic disorder that she, of course, was born with. And she suffers much from this. And actually, anxiety and depression go hand in mm -hmm. hand. And anxiety goes hand in hand with this disorder that she has. Oh, okay. So she has battled depression. And it's more of an ongoing chronic problem that she has. And so she's going to tell her story. Amen. And then the following month, we're going to speak with someone who went through postpartum depression very severely. Mm -hmm. And so I have several people mm -hmm. that have gone through different types of depression, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about it. Yes, that's good. Yeah. That's very good because there's someone else out there yes. that we can encourage mm -hmm. by giving our testimonies. That, that was what I was excited about, A Woman's Joy, when this program was birthed many years ago. Uh, I thought of the scripture in Revelations, they shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. Mm -hmm. The life comes out of a testimony, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. And when people see there's another, I'm another exactly. Candy or I'm another Donnie, and exactly. she went through that, God can help me too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I get excited about hearing those testimonies. Mm -hmm. I looked up um, the word depression. And it says it's a feeling of severe despondency, mm -hmm. which is low spirits caused by loss of hope or courage and rejection, dejection. Mm -hmm. People get discouraged. Oh, absolutely. They become hopeless. Yes. I also read that self-doubt creeps in and that swiftly turns to depression. I can remember when I was depressed, I couldn't make decisions. Mm. And that's what I think of when you say the word uh -huh. self-doubt. I doubted myself. I couldn't make decisions. And that's, I think, one of the more minor symptoms. Mm -hmm. But the hopelessness, I can remember when I became hopeless. I did not know if I would ever be better. 
Mm. And that is a frightening place to mm -hmm. be. It's a very terrible place to be. When you're depressed, it's like you are in a pit, mm -hmm. just a black pit. Mm -hmm. And you can't see a way out. And like you uh, said earlier, most people, when they get depressed, they withdraw. Yes. So you are feeling, really feeling alone. Yes. I'm sure. It's very lonely. Yes. Don't want to deal with people. Mm -mm. Just, no. Just withdraw. Yes. You isolate, and that's mm. a very dangerous thing to do. Yes. One of the pieces of advice my primary care provider gave me was to socialize. Mm -hmm. She said at least once a week, you have got to go out and be with somebody. Mm -hmm. And that was along with diet, exercise, sleep, therapy, all of the components of advice she gave me, that was one of them. Mm -hmm. Because it is dangerous to withdraw like we typically do. Mm -hmm. I try to encourage people if they're going through something uh, to get in the Word of God and look up scriptures. Like if you're dealing with fear, look up all the scriptures and see mm -hmm. what God has to say mm -hmm. about fear. Anxiety is in there. In King mm -hmm. James they use anxiety. Do not be anxious yeah. for anything, but at all things with supplication and thanksgiving, mm -hmm. come before the Lord. Yeah. And it says, and he will bring peace. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but if you start looking those scriptures up, they really do minister to you healing. Sometimes you have to hear them over and <laughs> yes. over, just like you talked about First yes. Peter uh, 1, 1, 3. three. Mm -hmm. we, lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, you knew Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, so you believed that He arose. Right. So you had that faith. So when you read that verse, you associated with that lively hope. Right. But do you know, you knew Jesus. for some depressed Christians, the Word becomes... Yes dead and yes. it did for me not all the time but a lot of the time it was just flat words on a page but I was advised stay in it stay in the word mm -hmm. um, keep speaking it over yourself keep reading it even if you don't think you're getting a thing from it because Isaiah 55 11 tells mm -hmm. us my word will not come back void yes. it will not return to me void no. so even if it's going to be two months two years 20 years later it will come back Mm -hmm. and there is fruit from it. So mm -hmm. that's one of the pieces mm -hmm. of advice I give as well. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word no matter what. Mm -hmm. And if you have to, you know, uh, a lot of times, um, I know when my father had had some surgery um, and he was kind of in and out of it, you know, um, um, I had a cassette back in that time. They had cassette players. Yeah. <laughs> and I put earphones on it. And uh, in fact, it was uh, saying in a gospel group. So it was the gospel group, and he was familiar with listening mm -hmm. to them. So we put that those earphones on him, and he could hear that when some of the uh -huh. family couldn't be there, and it helped him a lot. Yeah. And he even made comment later about he remembered listening to this music. Mm. But you could do the same with the Word of God. That's right. There are CDs, there are DVDs now you can get it for television mm -hmm. to keep that Word of God coming. Right. Even though that person may be ill, um, you know, or you may not think they're listening, but you can play that. Mm -hmm. Because that word, I'll tell you, will minister to yes. you. Yes. And, and the point about music is very good. Oh. Because we need to hear Christian lyrics. Yes. Because they give us hope. Yes, they, they do. And they give us truth. Yes, they do. And a lot of times it will lift your spirit. I practice it still today. You know, all the things that, that I teach and I share uh -huh. with people, I try to practice them as well. Because mm -hmm. they're good for everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it worked then. It, it, it was a good thing. So yeah. why change a good thing, yeah. huh? Why change? I, I looked up some of the synonyms for depression. Misery. Uh-huh. <laughs> sadness. Yes, profoundly. Sorrow. Yes. Gloom. Mm-hmm. Dejection. Downheartedness. Low spirits. Mm-hmm. Discouragement despair, mm -hmm. hopelessness, and I hadn't heard this, but people in the past, I've heard people say, I've got the blues. Yes. Yeah. And clinical depression, though, is more than just being blue for a day or two. Uh -huh. Yes. It does have to go on for at least two weeks. Yes. And if it has gone on that long, then it's time to go. Yes. Go get a diagnosis and find uh -huh. out if that's what it is or if it's something else. Yeah. Like in your case, medication played into your It was your a part role. of it. Yes. It was a part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah put together well when we get too many 
<laughs> things in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to explode sometimes. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? But sadness, mm -hmm. sorrow. You know, sometimes when people lose a loved one, and it's a natural thing to be sad. Yes. Because we loved them. They was part of our life. Mm -hmm. So it's natural to be sad. Mm -hmm. we, there is a correct way to grieve. Yeah. Yes. But then, like you said, if it lasts longer than, well, sometimes it's longer than two sure. weeks with grieving. But if it's years. Yes, if you get stuck in it. I've been around yes. people, and you think they just lost them just recently, mm -hmm. their loved one, and come to find out it's been years. Yes then they need some help right. to get, like you said, they're stuck. Right. They need to get past that mm -hmm. so they can start living life mm -hmm. again. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'm so thankful uh, that your husband was there, that mm -hmm. you had a church family, um, pastor and his mm -hmm. wife. You had several people surrounding you in prayer and mm -hmm. loving you through this. And uh, that is big. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was blessed by that, but I wonder how it might have been different if I had been more transparent. Uh, because okay. I really tried to hide it from the world. I hide, hide it from my family that lived uh -huh. out of town. Um, I hid it from my church family. And so they were all just confused. Um, and there's, there's no reason to hide it. No. Our society, we're getting better. Yes. We're definitely getting better. There's more conversation about depression, but there's still a stigma with mental illness where, you know, if your brain's sick, how is that any different than if your liver is sick? Right. <laughs> right. But we treat it differently. Yes, we do. And we shouldn't. No. We so um, I think now it's good to, to promote being transparent. Yes. Being open. Be yes. real. Because when we do hear people tell their story, what do we, do we think less of them or do we admire them like wow that's that's great you're sharing that to help people yes, yes. so it's good to share yeah always good to share mm -hmm. another thing we had talked about was some negative words <laughs> things we speak out of our mouth yes. in fact the bible tells us life and death that's right is in the tongue that's and right this is so true so words we speak those negative words and you said that one phrase that you caught yourself saying I can't do that and it really did take you you really thought about that it really hit you hard right when you said I can't do that because mm -hmm. I had never said that before I could yeah. do anything yes <laughs> I thought all I of could. a sudden you're saying I can't I can't I found some things that people say mm -hmm. and what God says mm -hmm. and there's scripture to back these up but one of them we start with I can't figure it out of course we as people we always want to know how everything yes. happens and why it happened and and how it's going to get fixed and and we don't always have that immediate mm -mm. <laughs> answer so we just think we got to figure everything out or you know or we just you know we've got to figure it out but what does God say God says, I will direct your steps. Mm -hmm. Again, we're back to that trusting mm -hmm. God. Right. And what's the truth? Yeah. And what's the truth? Mm -hmm. Trusting God. And, of course, I'm going to go to it. But this is very familiar. And I quote, this, this is one of the scriptures God gave me when I was in my pit many years ago uh, from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I still yes. say it yet today. <laughs> yes. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding mm -hmm. and many times I'll hear that verse come in my head yes when I start to I'm trying to figure something out lean not to your own understanding right because we don't know we don't know the whole picture no. we don't know all, everything involved but he does mm -hmm. and verse 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path mm -hmm. and it's true Yes, so that should alleviate us from getting all anxious, mm -hmm. frustrated, depressed, uh -huh. or down because I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and negative thoughts, like you said, yeah. not just our words, but negative thoughts yes. are very powerful. Oh, 
and they can just run around in our minds over and over and over. Um, can I share with you yes. about a ministry? There's a ministry in Georgia called Father's Heart Ministry, and it's ran by Jerry and Denise Basil. And uh, then the Healing Prayer Ministry I'm a part of. This is a process we, we practice with people, and it's these are lies. Right, these are lies right. that we believe, and usually they come from childhood. Mine uh -huh. about I can do anything I put my mind to. Uh -huh. That was a message I got growing up as well. But uh, when we uh, believe these lies, they really impact us throughout yes. our whole life, and we've got to come to a point where we determine I'm not going to believe that anymore. Mm -hmm. But it can be a process. So they have what is called steps to discovering grace. Oh. So you identify the lie that you've believed. Um, and it could be, um, no one will ever accept me for me. There. Yeah. And you have to then let the Holy Spirit show you, where did that begin? Was there a certain instance? Was there a certain person that that was formed in your mm -hmm. thoughts? Mm -hmm. Then ask the Lord, Lord, how do you feel about that? And allow him to speak to you how he is sad for you, how he's mm -hmm. grieved that you believe that lie. Mm -hmm. Then determine what did it cost you and go through your, your life and think about it. it's cost me relationships, it's cost me anger, it's whatever it may right. have cost you. Then you grieve that. Take some time and grieve what you've lost because of believing this lie. Mm. Then when you've done all that, you can forgive from a really, really deep place. It's mm. not so much of a surface forgiveness, but you can forgive those people who planted that lie in your mm -hmm. mind. And then you identify the truth. What's wow. the truth? Wow. I do belong. And then you find a scripture verse that supports that truth. And 1 Corinthians 3.23 says, and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Amen. And you memorize it, and then if that lie pops up, you, use that you verse. fight it with the Word, just like what you're saying. But for some, they've received such deep, mm -hmm. binding, uh, wounding lies in their childhood that they need to go through this oh, yes. process. And it's so healing. It's amazing. So I highly recommend it. Yes. Wow. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, the Word, we know there's always power in yes, the Word. Yes, absolutely. Even Jesus himself, after the wilderness, mm -hmm. he was tempted. Yes. And he said, it is written. Yes, he battled with the Word. And we can do the same thing. That's why you have to study the Word. You've mm -hmm. got to meditate on the Word. You've got to memorize the Word. That's right. You've got to put it into use. It says, be a doer of the Word. And then those words, the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us all things. Mm -hmm. He will re bring that to your remembrance. Yes. And I remember I was having a pity party. I was really good at the, and when I was in my pit, mm -hmm. time of depression. And I didn't even realize I was depressed. I, um, <laughs> but everything in my life I thought I had lost, so mm -hmm. I, I can understand why yes. I wouldn't be in this depression. But I withdrew. I was very much a family person. And I had an aunt and uncle celebrating one of their anniversaries, and all the family was going to be there. And we were always all together. Uh -huh. I didn't want to go. I stayed home. I withdrew. I can see myself sitting in the living room in that chair yet today oh. when I think of this. Yes. And all of a sudden, the scripture, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the scripture where Jesus said, I have come that you can have life and have it more abundant. And I'm like you with that scripture of 1 Peter uh -huh. that resonated in me. And I went, wow. Yeah. It's like the light switch had been turned on. And I grabbed for that life. Mm -hmm. And it was not an instant overnight, but right. it was a process. But right. God kept bringing me up out of that pit. Mm -hmm. And I went from Miss Pity Party to Miss Joy. Uh -huh. That's what people call me today. Yeah. But I know that joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's in my heart mm -hmm. because I have that relationship with Jesus. Yeah. But thank God for those scriptures mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit will bring it back to remembrance. And it will be powerful when he does. Yeah. <laughs> it just comes alive in right. you. Right. It just comes alive. So, you know, and, and um, we talk about nobody loves me. That's another big one. We mm -hmm. only got about three minutes. Oh, okay. So we'll have to wait for a few <laughs> months to discuss. But that's a big one. Right. That yes. no, every, everybody deals with from time to time. But we don't allow us to get, allow ourselves to get over where we get in depression over yeah. it, but some do. Right, some do.
nobody loves me. Yeah. And some have suffered in their childhoods. Yes. You know, they didn't receive the love that no, God they intended. Did not. No. You know, their parents didn't give them what God yeah. intended, and none of us do. You know, we all have our shortcomings yes. as parents. Yes. And there's things that we should give our children, and we don't. And yes. then there's things we've given them that we shouldn't have. Yes. <laughs> and yes. so that can impact us, yes, and we can, can begin to believe lies. Yes. You know, uh, I'm blessed. I have um, worked a lot with foster children mm. years back, but um, I had the the children in our home. I told them that their mother loved them the only way she knew how. Mm. Her mother probably didn't hold her and rock her yeah. and tell her that she was loved mm -hmm. or tell her she was pretty mm -hmm. because no one did that for her mo their mother. Yeah. And that's very important that people realize mm -hmm. that, that people love the only way they know how, how they've been taught up. And I think that's a great point. I don't know. God wants us to uh, maybe focus on that a little bit. But if you see you're not being treated <laughs> in love, maybe like uh, your friend's parents are treating uh, your friend, maybe your friend with a girl, or you're a boy and, you're, and you know, you have that friend that you go ride bicycles with and you see his parents mm -hmm. are treating him different. Don't, don't let that pull you down because people love the only way they know how. And if they have not had that positive, mm -hmm. reinforcing type of love, and the kind of love that God wants us to share right. with others, as Candy is talking about, they don't know how to give it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know about it, so how can they give it? Right. But you know what? We can all come to know that love through Jesus That's Christ. Right. That's right. And a relationship with Jesus, and I'm going to close up with this today. I pray that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Scripture says all have sinned, every single one of us have sinned, and we fall short of the glory of God. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And whosoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. That's what the Bible says. Shall be saved. Today, reach out to God. Ask Him to forgive you for your sins, ask you him to forgive you for bringing shame to his name and trying to do things on your own. We're all guilty of that. Mm -hmm. And then ask him to come in your heart and be your Lord and Savior and walk with you the rest of your life. Get in this word of God, read it every day, find you a Bible preaching church, get in fellowship with other believers and spend time in prayer and come to know God loves you so very much. God bless. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin. No rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend. All my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy. We're all seeking something. Mankind is searching, looking for the meaning for life. I was so afraid. I'm alone. Pain from the past. I had a rocket go through the building. Spinning lives out of control. I really was frustrated and angry at God. We looked at each other and started crying right there. On our next program. Are you tired of Bible prophecy since...